Hello students, welcome back. In the last session, we were doing about the evolution of life. What was evolution? What, how the evolution of life took place? What were the evidences? We studied about five types of evidences. Morphological evidence, paleontological evidence, anatomical evidence, vestigial evidence, and the embryological evidence. Now what did this evidence do? These evidences tried to prove that our ancestors, what were their parts of the bodies, what were their functions, how the evolution must have taken place, what are the various variations which we see now. Now based on this concept of evolution of life, Charles Darwin, Charles Robert Darwin, he gave a theory of natural selection. He gave a theory in 1869 that in this book on the origin of species he said that whichever organisms had a particular factor which allows them to be fit in this uh, environment only are allowed to live so this theory which he proposed was not accepted initially after maybe many years later uh, common consensus was taken among the scientists and they came to the conclusion that yes the, there is a natural selection going on in the nature. It's not deliberate, it's natural. Now Charles Darwin, what did he propose? He said the pro process of selection of characteristics that contribute to the fitness for survival was called natural selection. Now what is the process of selection? Now, who selects? Do I select? Do you select? No, we are no one to select. How we can select for our own generation? How we can select for the generation which is already gone? Here we are talking about generations and generations and generations. That means we are talking about crows of years back what must have happened and over the years what must, it, must have happened what we are seeing now. The process of selection. Now selection is done by nature. Many times during the reproduction variations are observed. Now these variations may allow some organism to survive in, that in this uh, surrounding and some may not survive. So that is called as selection. So process of selection of characteristics. Now which characteristics we are talking about? We are talking about various characteristics, various traits which we got from our parents, from our ancestors that contribute to the fitness for survive, survival. Now there are many traits which allows us to be fit. Okay, Some characteristics are there which, are, which we have got from our parents. These are the factors which are actually contributing for our survival. If you are fit, you are surviving in this environment. This is the general rule of environment. This selection by nature is very important to understand. So when I was saying that during reproduction, variations occur. Variations occur, new factors are formed. We study about recombination of gametes. So this recombination allows some variations to occur. And these variations become the factors which make us fit or which make us fit to fight in this environment and survive. And that is called as natural selection. So if you are asked a question, what is natural selection said by Darwin? So you can say that Charles Robert Darwin uh, gave a definition, the process of selection of characteristics that contribute to the fitness for survival it was called as natural selection. Now what is the criteria on based on what you are saying that this selection is by nature? There should be some criteria. So the criteria given by Charles Darwin was successful adaptation for growth and reproduction. Two things are very important for the ancestors to pass on their characteristics. That means growth must take place. Once growth takes place, reproduction should take place. So successful adaptation. What is adaptation? Adaptation is the type of thing which we adapt in the film due to surroundings. Now you must have seen the polar bears. The bear who lives in the very cold climate. Now what adaptations they have got? They have got big, huge, long hairs on their body. Now this hair 
is actually protecting them from cold climate. So this is called as one of the adaptation. And this adaptation is important for his growth. So successful adaptation for growth and then reproduction is actually the criteria for natural selection in any environment. Now there is one small incident which I would like to highlight which is given in your book. In England, Birmingham, there was a forest where large number of various types of trees were there. On these trees we know many insects and moths live. M-O-T-H moth. Moth is a type of small insect. Now there were two colored moths, gray colored and black colored. Now when the, there was not much industrial revolution, when there was not much uh, concretization of buildings, so obviously more algae and more fungi were developing or were reproducing on the barks of the tree. Now what is bark? The bark is the, the outer covering of the tree. So on that you can see the patches, grey colored, brown colored patches. Those are algae and fungi. So that time what happened? Two types of colors of moth were seen. Grey colored moth and black colored moth. So when algae and fungi used to grow on them, they had a greyish background. So when they got a grey background, the grey moth were not identified by any other higher animal or their prey and they were not eaten by their uh, enemies. But the black moth, they could be easily seen against the grey background. So the black moth were eaten more. Because algae and fungi were also grey coloured, so grey moth got a camouflage. Now what do you mean by camouflage? That means when you are hidden by the same colour of the surroundings. So surrounding colour was algae and fungi which was grey coloured and grey moth. So their colour matched. When their colour matched, the prey or the enemies or the higher animals could not identify them and they were eating only the black moth. So what happened? As a result, the grey moth population increased. This was natural selection because nature had selected this and black moth population decreased. Now as the development took place, industrial revolution came into being, so much pollution was created in the environment. So that pollution, because of that pollution, the algae and fungi were not growing much as early as before the industrial revolution. So what happened? Now the reverse started taking place. The Because of the industrial revolution, the black color moth were now camouflaged with the black color or brown colored bark of the tree as algae and fungi were not growing much and now the grey moth could be identified very easily and so this grey moth were eaten by their predators and the population of black moths increased. Now also at present also the black moth are more in number as compared to grey moth. Now this example which is given in your book is actually the selection by nature or natural selection which the theory was given by Charles Darwin. The natural selection theory is very important to understand how this theory came and why we should be having some factors which, um, which are able for us to be fit in this uh, environment and we can prolong our life here. Now but this theory could not do one thing. It could not explain how the inherited characters was passed from one generation to another generation. And this theory only supported that nature plays a very important role for the survival of the fittest. And this was important. There was another scientist, Jean Baptist Lamarck. He gave a theory Lamarckism. So that name has come Lamarckism. What is Lamarckism? Lamarckism is a theory given by Jean Baptiste Lamarck. He said that there is a theory, he proposed a theory like the inherited traits or the inherited characteristics which are passed from one generation to another, acquired characteristics also can be passed. Now what is the difference between inherited characters and acquired characters? Inherited characters are the characters which we are getting in inheritance 
from our parents. That means whatever characteristics parents have, it is passed on to the offspring. That type of characteristic or trait is called as inherited characteristic. Then what is acquired? Now I am living in a, in a surrounding where some type of adaptation is necessary. So maybe in a one generation I have adapted to that environment by creating a different trait which is called as acquired trait. I got the trait because I wanted a change in the environment. I had to be fit here. So the acquired trait can be passed on from parent to offspring. This theory was given by Lamarck and so this theory came into being as known as Lamarckism. So Lamarckism is also known as soft inheritance theory. So this is also called as soft inheritance theory. It only suggests or it only gives the theory that the acquired traits can also be passed on from parents to offspring. The acquired traits are the traits which they get in this life because they are adapting to the environment to live in this environment. So this type of acquired traits can also be passed on to the parents from the parents to the offspring. This was the theory given by Jean Baptist, Jean Baptist Lamarck. By this we come to end of this chapter, the mapping our genes. We have come to know all the types of uh, genetic factors which are responsible for uh, inheritance. We have come to know what is evolution. We also studied about what is natural selection. Now we will, we will now try to understand the whole lesson as a whole from the concept map. Now this is the concept map of this chapter mapping our genes. Concept map means at a glance with the help of this flow chart we can understand what we actually studied in this chapter. We studied what is heredity which is governed by Mendel's law. What did Mendel say that hereditary characters are sent from parents to offspring either by monohybrid cross or by dihybrid cross. If we consider what is monohybrid cross, it mono means one. One characteristic feature in each plant was considered and that was monohybrid cross. So which characteristic feature he considered for his, exam for his uh, experiment? He considered red flowers and white flowers. Red flowers and white flowers. Red was considered to be dominant based on his results earlier and white was considered to be recessive. So it was shown red with capital R and white with small r. This is how he just uh, took this characteristic features. This monohybrid cross when after crossing red and white flowers uh, pea plants they produce F1 generation. F stands for filial. Now this F1 generation give, gave rise to all red flowers because phenotypically when I see physically all were red flowers but genotypically they were hybrid flowers. Why I am why saying hybrid because as I said red was dominant there I used capital R and small r for white. They had small r also in them after crossing over but the dominant was red so all appeared to be red but genotypically typically it was a hybrid mixed type of gametes. When F1 generation plants were taken as parents they gave rise to F2 generation that is a filial 2 generation. In the filial 2 generation what he observed? He observed that he got 4 plants, 3 were all red in color and one was in white color. That means in 3 the red color was dominant and in the one color, in one plant white color was dominant. This was phenotypically what we could see. Genotypically it was in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. 1 is pure RR, capital RR, that means pure it was red, 2 it was hybrid, that means it had one dominant character, one recessive character. But since dominant character was present, so the two plants shows red color. And the one 
the last is to one is pure recessive character which was seen which is white in color so this was about the monohybrid cross or monohybrid cross generating to various new hereditary characters now we well, now you'll see what was the dye hybrid cross dye hybrid cross two characteristic features he took he took the seed color and the seed shape seed color he took as yellow and green and seed shape he took as round and wrinkled so these two characteristic features he took in the pea plant and then crossed over that means he took two pea plants one with round and yellow seeds other with wrinkled and green seeds so this these these two plants which he took were called as p1 p1 of parental generation this parental generation gave rise to these gametes r r y y which were dominant and small r small y which were recessive then it produced f1 generation which was a dye hybrid and obviously they were mixture in that mixture they were formed by parental combination that means what parent had they also had but they again formed a recombination small r capital y capital r small y this was the new factor which was developed in the f1 generation now f1 generation was considered to be parents now and those parents produced f2 generation again it gave rise to a phenotype now we had studied about the square checkerboard checkerboard square where punnett square it is called as it where there were 16 squares made there four gametes of male and four gametes of female we had crossed and seen what we saw the phenotypically or physically it was in the ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 but genotypically it was 1 is to 1 is to 2 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 2 is to 1 is to 1 that means here various different combinations were formed genotypically when we considered the genes now this hereditary can be explained by the variations also now variations in species as mendel's law said there are when sexual reproduction takes place large number of uh, variations happen and those variations were explained by mendel's law and he this was supported by darwin's theory what darwin said darwin said that evolution has taken place and this evolution has taken place because of the variations which has occurred from one generation to another generation this darwin's theory was supported by various evidences now, these four are can be called as evidences now these evidences were morphological that means how appearance wise it appears anatomical that means what body parts had the same origin but different function or different function and same origin some are vestigial that means there are some parts in our body which were used long back but due to the various uh, variations which have come in our body those organs are of no use and paleontologically means the proof of fossils so this for these uh, evidences were enough to support the darwin's theory that evolution has taken place the theory of evolution has taken place because of various variations happening from one generation to another generation this is about the concept map uh, or the whole lesson in short if you study the outline of this lesson this once you understand what is monohybrid and what, what is dihybrid this is very important part of your whole lesson the two more question comes for showing the f1 generation or f2 generation so if you know the basis or the theory part you can easily show in the dihybrid cross very important part mark wise is the punnett square you if you know how to make the punnett square you don't have to learn anything you just cross with the male and female and write there the gametes which are formed and then we can show how phenotypically it is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 these are the important parts of this lesson i hope you have understood this now we will continue with the explanation of the questions given in your exercise page number 178